So this is an introduction to the second part of calculus, which is about integration. Remember, it's about finding areas under curves. So remember, though, that a derivative, or doing differentiation, let's remember what that does. So let's do an example, maybe. We'll just start off with that. So let's say I have, um, let's say I have f of x here. Let's have f of x equals x squared. Remember what f primed is? f primed of x is just a derivative. Right? I'm just going to go down, so to speak. I'm going to do the derivative. Okay, I'm just going to show you what we're doing here. Just to remind you, because I'm going to show you by contrast what we're going to do now. So the derivative of x squared, remember the rule for derivative. If you've done it a zillion times now, hopefully this is easy. You take the exponent, put it in front, so it becomes 2 times x, make the exponent 1 less than it was, so now it's just to the power of 1. That's what you do when you do a derivative, or differentiation. Well now we're going to learn about integration, which is called anti-differentiation. In other words, instead of starting off at f getting to f primed, what if I start off with f primed and I go up to f? That's called anti-differentiation. That's a another way of seeing it. So we're doing integration, what we're going to call anti-differentiation. That's called integration, or an integral. So if someone says, take the integral of this, that just means find the thing where you get this way. So we're going kind of backwards. So in other words, you can start with f primed of x and get to f of x. See, we're going that way. That's the important part here. So what notation do we use when we do this? Remember when we were doing derivatives, we said like f primed, or maybe we say y primed, or we might say dy dx? Well, the notation we use for an integral is very important as well. So it's called, watch this, so we're going to say the integral is this. We write this weird little symbol right here, almost looks like a weird uh, crowbar. And we're going to say f of x dx. This is the symbol we're going to use here. This is how we, this is how we write this stuff. So what's really important, uh, in these cases right here, we have this symbol right here that means do this antiderivative, as we call it, this antiderivative of the function, and you have to say with respect to what? This dx is so important, because maybe this is a function that has lots of other variables, so it could be dy or dq or whatever. And our course is not going to be so important, it's mostly going to be x's, but this is really important you actually still write the dx. It means nothing without the dx. So this weird little symbol right here, that's a little bit tough for a lot of people. I like this little meme right here. Wait, where is it? Uh, here. I like this. Who would win? <laughs> Students with high expectations for the future or some weird looking crowbar. <laughs> that's the integral symbol. So I'm going to slowly bring you through this and see if this will make sense for you. So integration is the area under the curve, what we've just been talking about here. So in this case right here, if I wanted to do it, when we're talking about anti-differentiation. In other words, going this way, that's taking the area under the curve. Let me show you how to actually do it. So remember, derivatives tell you the gradient, while integrals tell you the area under the curve. That's what it's going to help us to know. F that's for later. For right now, we're going to, well, I'm going to show you a few practical examples, then I'll show you what to do in general. We'll, we'll get there. We're going to actually, later on in other videos, we're going to be finding the actual area underneath curvy curves. For right now, let's start off with nice, simple ideas. I don't know if you remember this uh, video I did with an intro to this, but I showed you something very similar. So let's just say we're trying to find the area under this curve right here. That would be the area. Well, this here is called f of x. What I would do is I would write it like this. I would say the area is going to be equal to the integral of f of x dx. And I even say where I start from. I'm going to start from 0, and I'm going to end at 2. This is just so you can see the symbols we use. That means start here at 0, go all the way up to x equals 2. This is how we're going to do it. Now we're going to learn how to formally do it. For right now, let's just try to calculate the area here. So it's going to be 2 times 2. So it's just going to be 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. Boom, we're done. That was pretty easy, right? What about the area for a curved graph? Uh-oh, that's going to be a lot harder to do. So this here could be some weird f of x here. That's going to be way harder. So I don't know if you remember me showing you this. We could actually approximate all these by trapezoids. So we can say trapezoids of you know equal width here. Well, you know, we can maybe find the area of each of these right here, like this right here. I'm doing a bad job of it, but I hope you get the idea. I could try to approximate it like this to an infinite number. You know, if I had an infinite number of trapezoids uh, that were infinitely small, then I could get the area, right? So that sounds really complicated, doesn't it? Area, how could I do it with the infinite number of trapezoids that are infinitely small or infinitely thin? 
Can you imagine that? So if I just had really, really thin ones, I made, I squished them all and have an infinite number of infinitely small uh, trapezoids, then I could get the area. That sounds complicated, but don't worry, we're going to have a trick for all this. And that's what I'm going to show you. For right now, let's just learn the rules of the game, okay? So right now, we're just going to learn the game of integration. I'll show you how to use it later. So for right now, let's just concentrate on this rule of anti-differentiation. So we're going to have this symbol here. So if we have the integral of x to the n, we're going to write it like this. The integral of x to the power of n dx. This is how we write it. And we have a trick. Just like with derivatives, you had the exponent coming down in front and the exponent becoming one less. Well, now the exponent's going to go one bigger. Instead of coming in front, you're going to divide. So watch. I'm going to go x to the power of, now it has to grow this time. This has to become n plus 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by the same number, n plus 1. And weirdly enough, we're going to have to add a plus c. That's going to be the really key thing. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about this c. What in the world is that? This is on your formula booklet, so that's good. Um, we're also told a few things like uh, n is not equal to negative 1 because that messes it up because negative 1 plus 1 gives you 0. So that can't be the case. These are going to be nice integer numbers here. Um, so they're not going to be rational numbers. So we're going we're gonna to just keep it just nice integer numbers like this. Okay. So we're going to talk about this plus c in a second. But this indefinite integral, it's called indefinite integral because you don't know where to start or stop. Just like with derivatives, how we can find the derivative anywhere, and then we were finding it at a specific point. Well, this right here, what I gave you, this integral, I told you, start at 0, stop at 2. This was called a definite integral, because I know where to start and stop. So I can actually find the number. In this case, I don't know where to start and stop. I'm finding the area for anything. Then later I can just put in, oh, start here, stop here, and we'll get the answer. Okay, so this is called an indefinite integral because you don't know where to start or stop. In other words, do you notice this is blank? There's nothing here, and there's nothing here. That's called indefinite. Okay, so this helps you find the area under a curve for any bounds. We'll specify them later. But for right now, let's just sort of concentrate on the game of doing integrals. Let's just concentrate on that for right now. So let's go ahead and uh, find this here. I like this one here, calculus teacher, students finding and understanding derivatives, and <laughs> integration comes in and just smashes it. <laughs> All right, so let's look at our good old example of x squared. We've done this one before, right? If we do x squared, what's the derivative again? Oh yeah, it's 2x. Remember, because a 2 comes in front, this becomes 1 less. That's the derivatives. So let's practice now. Let's do the integral of this just for fun. Let's just see what happens. Remember, going down is a derivative. But remember, in theory then, that means if I go up, if I start here and I go that way, that should be the integral or the antiderivative. Integral. So that should be going this way. In other words, I should, in theory, be able to start off with 2x, do some magic, and end up with x squared. Let's see if that trick works. Remember this trick. It says take your exponent, make it one more, and divide by that. And don't forget to add this c, and we'll talk about the c in a second here. So let's see if we can do it. So we do this one right here. Let's see. This integral is going to be, uh, let's see here. We're going to take our 2x, and we're going to make it, right now it's to the 1, so I make it to the power of 2. And I divide by 2. And don't forget, plus c. Well, magic occurs. The 2's cancel out. I end up with then x squared plus c. So look at carefully here what's going on. So why do I have this plus c? Do you notice this is important? Now, do you notice I did start off with 2x, and I managed to get the x squared. What's going on? What's this plus c? This is what I want to talk about here. This plus c is just a constant. It's just a constant. You just add some number. So it's just it's just some number. Okay, so is this. And maybe I'll put it right here too. This is a just a constant. We don't care exactly. It's just it could be five, eight, two, negative two pi. It could be whatever. It's just a constant number. Why do we put it there? So I just want to try to answer that. So why do we have the plus c? Well, that's because we're supposed to be doing the opposite of, deriv uh, of a derivative. But c could be anything. I just want to show you some examples. So what if I started off with, what if I started off with f of x being x squared plus 8, let's just say. Well, f primed of x would be uh, 2x, wouldn't it? Just 2x. In other words, 
Let's think about the integration. If I did integration, I'd start off with 2x, I'd have to finish with this. But watch carefully. What if I had a different example? What if I had f of x equals, I don't know, x squared minus 50? What's f primed of x? Well, it's still just 2x, because the derivative of constant just disappears. Do you notice that no matter what it is that I make that constant, I can make f of x equal to, oh god, I don't know, uh, x squared plus 8 pi. As long as there's no x's, f prime of x still gets me 2x. This still disappears. So to see, here's the problem. If I start with 2x, how do I know that I end up with x squared plus 8? Or if I started with this 2x, how do I know that it's x squared minus 50? Or how do I know that 2x here gets me x squared plus 8 pi? Because remember, I'm trying to go backwards. Anti-differentiation or integration. I'm trying to start off with the answer and go and get the um, original. So do you notice, and this right here is the c. This right here is the c. This right here is the c. That's why, without any extra information, I just leave it. I'm like, I don't know. I got to find out more info. Then I can figure out what c is. For right now, I just leave it. I'm like, I don't know. If I started with 2x, I know it's x squared plus something. And then I need more info to figure it out. So this plus c is so important. Every time you do an integral, an indefinite integral, one where you don't know the bounds, always, always, always put the plus c. That is so important. So let's do an example. Let's do an example with just this indefinite integral here. So I start off with f of x. If I want to do the integral of f of x, I always have to write dx like this. Let's do it. So 5x becomes 5x. Remember what happens? You always have to make the exponent 1 bigger. Right now it's a 1. So it becomes a 2, and I divide by 2. That's how I do it. Plus, let's see. Now this is x squared, so it becomes x. Let's see. 2 plus 1 becomes a 3, and I divide that by 3. And then this right here is a 1. Well, it's technically an x to the 0 right now, so it becomes x to the 1 over 1, which you know I can just kind of ignore. But don't forget, plus c, because I still don't know what that's supposed to be. Let's just reduce it a little bit, simplify a little bit. So it's 5x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 plus x plus c. There we go. This is what I have. This is my final answer. This is as good as I can do. Now you can always check if you did it right. How can I check? Well, do the derivative. To check, do the derivative of this thing. Derivative of you know, 5x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3. Because remember, I said it's supposed to be the antiderivative. So let's do the derivative of this thing. Let's uh, check if I did it right. Derivative of this would be, let's see, the 2 would come in front, but the 2 would cancel out that one. So I'd end up with just 5x, and this would be 1 less. So that'd be it. Plus, let's see, the 3 would come in front here. That would cancel out the 3 and make it x squared. This right here would become a 1, and this right here would disappear. Hey. I've done the same thing, do you notice? And this could have been plus 9 or something, right? I, I wouldn't know what else to do here. So that's just why I, I don't know what it was, because I could have had a plus something else. I don't know. So that's just why it's uh, actually quite interesting, I think, to, to see how to try to do this. Let's look at a final example here. How do we actually find C? Well, we can only find C if we know more information. So here is an example. They say find f of x given that f primed of x is this. So we know the derivative, we want to find the original function. But we're also told, by the way, that f of 2 is 5. Let's see what we're going to do with this later. Okay, so let's just try to do this. First of all, how do we start with f primed and get to f? Well, we do the opposite of a derivative, which is an antiderivative. In other words, we're going to say that f of x equals the integral of f primed of x dx. This is how we write it. We say the original function is equal to the integral of this derivative. Again, this might be a little bit confusing, got to get used to it, but we say it's an antiderivative. The whole point is that this is called a derivative. To start off with f, get f primed, that's a derivative. If you start with f primed and you want to get f, that's when you do this integration or anti-differentiation. So that's just what I'm doing right now. I'm saying, ah, I start off with f primed, so take the integral of f primed, that gets me f. All right, let's sit there and do it. So f of x equals, let's see, let's do this integral here. So I'm going to do the integral of, it's a good idea to write down what you're going to do. So I'm going to do the integral of 3x squared 
plus 2x, and I say dx like this. It's always, you should always write this out first. So let's go ahead and do it. So f of x equals, let's now go ahead and do it. So 3x squared, remember the rule for integration, you always make the exponent one more and you divide by that. That's the rule right here. Always make the exponent one more and divide by that same number. Don't forget the plus c. So let me do that. So I'm going to make it, let's see, it's going to be 3x and the 2 becomes a 3, so it divides by 3 as well, plus 2x, and this right here is a 1 right now, so it becomes a 2, divide by that same number, don't forget plus c. Okay, good news, stuff cancels out, which is nice. So now I have finally f of x equals x cubed plus x squared plus c. Here's the problem. I don't know what to do about my c, do I? Well, I, well, I can kind of figure it out. Do you notice this right here now? So how do I find c? I mean, normally you just leave it, but I have some information. So this right here can help me to find it. That's the important thing. So let's see what I do here. I know that when x equals 2, I know that my f of x equals 5. In other words, my function equals 5. So I know then that when I put in x equals 2, so I'll put in 2 cubed, plus 2 squared plus c, then the answer is 5. That's what I know. I know that f of 2 is 5. Uh, five. So I'm going to use this information. That's the hard part to this. So 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2. Let's see. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Plus 2 squared, so that's just 4, plus c. Well, 8 plus 4 is 12, so I have 5 equals 12 plus c. Does this make any sense to you? Then that means that c equals 5 minus 12. So the whole point of what I'm trying to do here is to try to find out what is c. Well, now I can find it because 5 minus 12 is minus 7. So finally now, now I've got my answer. So f of x equals this mess here, so x cubed plus x squared. And now I've got c minus 7. This is my final answer, I'm done. Now let's see if I've done it right. If I've done it right, what should happen? So I'll check. I just want to show you how you can always check if you've done it right. Check. Well, let's find f primed of x from this thing that I just found. What's f primed? Well, it's going to be 3x squared, because remember the 3 comes in front, this becomes 1 less. This one here becomes 2x to the 1, and the minus 7 disappears. So is this really what I got here for f primed? Yep. Let's double check. Is f of 2 really 5? If I put a 2 here, this is 8. Uh, 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 minus 7 is indeed 5. So I know this works. So do you see we were able to find f of x given f primed? Now this stuff sometimes takes some practice, okay? So if you need to, go back and look at this again, because this stuff, the first time you see it, it does look really weird. It really, really is a weird crowbar. But I promise you, once you get used to it, just get used to this notation, this weird crowbar here, this symbol here, this integration symbol of f of x dx, just tells you we're doing the opposite of a derivative. We're starting with the derivative and getting to the original. And don't forget, if it's an indefinite integral, if we don't know the bounds, then we always have the plus c.